Borachim habayim b'shem Adonai. How blessed are all of you and all of us who have come here in the name of the Lord. We rejoice that Alan and Sarah will be joined in marriage in the presence of God and their loved ones. Almighty God, grant us your blessings to this bride and this groom. And in gratitude for the moment, we say, Boruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech olam, shehechayonu v'kiyamonu v'higiyonu l'azman hazeh. How blessed are you, Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who has given us life, sustained us, and brought us to this joyous time. You make us holy with your commandments and bless us through the sacred rite of marriage. My dear friends, you're about to enter into a union which is most sacred and most serious, a union which was established by God himself, by it, he gave to man and woman a share in the greatest work of creation, the work of the continuation of the human race. And, in this way, he sanctified human love, enabled man and woman to help each other live as children of God by sharing a common life under his fatherly care. Because God himself is thus its author, marriage is, of its very nature, a holy institution, requiring of those who enter into it a complete and unreserved giving of self. But Christ our Lord added to the beauty and holiness of matrimony, and even deeper meaning and a higher beauty. He referred to the love of marriage to describe his own love for his church, that is, for the people of God, whom he redeemed by his own blood. And so he gave to Christians a new vision of what married life ought to be, a life of self-sacrificing love like his own. It is for this reason that his apostle, St. Paul, clearly states that marriage is now and for all time to be considered a great mystery, intimately bound up, the supernatural union of Christ and the church, which union is also to be its pattern. This union then is most serious because it will bind you together for life in a relationship so close and so intimate that it will profoundly influence your whole future. That future, which its hopes and its disappointments, its successes and its failures, its pleasures and its pains, its joys and its sorrows is hidden from your eyes. You know that these elements are mingled in every life and are to be expected in your own. And so, not knowing what is before you, you take each other, for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health until death. Truly then, these words are most serious. It is a beautiful tribute to your undoubted faith in each other, that recognizing their full import, you are nevertheless so willing and ready to pronounce them. Because these words involve such solemn obligations, it is most fitting that you rest the security of your wedded life upon the great principle of self-sacrifice, and so you begin your married life by the voluntary and complete surrender of your individual lives in the interest of that deeper and wider life in which you are to have in common. Henceforth, you belong entirely to each other. You will be one in mind, one in heart, and one in affections. And whatever sacrifices you may hereafter be required to make to preserve the common life, always make them generously. Sacrifice is usually difficult and irksome. Only love can make it easy, and perfect love can make it a joy. We are willing to give in proportion as we love. And when love is perfect, the sacrifice is complete. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And the son so loved us that he gave himself for our salvation. Greater love than this no one has that one lay down his life for his friends. No greater blessing can come to your married life than pure conjugal love, loyal and true to the end. May then this love with which you join your hands and hearts today never fail but grow always deeper and stronger as the years go on. And if true love and the unselfish spirit of perfect sacrifice guide your every action, you can expect the greatest measure of earthly happiness that may be allotted to man and woman in this valley of tears. The rest is in the hands of God, nor will God be wanting to your needs. He will pledge you the lifelong support of his graces and the holy sacrament which you are going to give and receive. So we begin, let us pray. O oh God, who in creating the human race will that man and wife should be one, join, we pray, in a bond of inseparable love, these your servants, who are to be united in the covenant of marriage, so that, as they make their love fruitful, they may become, by your grace, witnesses to charity itself. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. Blessed the husband of a good wife, twice lengthen are his days. 
A worthy wife brings joy to her husband, peaceful and full of his life. A good wife is a generous gift bestowed upon him who fears the Lord. Be he rich or poor, his heart is content, and a smile is ever on his face. A gracious wife delights her husband, her thoughtfulness puts flesh on his bones. A gift from the Lord is her governed speech, and her firm virtue is of surpassing worth. Choicest of blessings is a modest wife, priceless her chaste soul. A holy and decent woman adds grace upon grace. Indeed, no price is worthy of her temperate soul. Like the sun rising in the Lord's heavens, a beauty of a virtuous wife is a radiance of her home. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. John. Children, let us love not in word or speech, but in deed and truth. Now this is how we shall know that we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts before him in whatever our hearts condemn. For God is greater than our hearts and knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence in God and receive from him whatever we ask because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And his commandment is this, we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Those who keep his commandments remain in him and he in them. And the way we know that he remains in us is from the spirit that he gave us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, This is my commandment love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my Father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you, and appoint you to go and bear fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. 
the gospel of the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. To have the opportunity, as well as the responsibility, to take care of someone is a sacred responsibility, a sacred duty, regardless of the form that it takes. Sarah, your professional capacity, you take care of the medical needs of your patients. Alan, in your way, you take care of the financial needs of your clients. <laughs> well, you better. <laughs> Yet, we're more. We are indeed far more than our medical needs, our physical needs, our fiscal needs. We are whole human persons. And the most important part that we can do is to take care of the whole person. This afternoon, in order to take care of one another, we must look to the spiritual needs of another person. And God, he's instituted the beautiful covenant of marriage to enable us to do so. Today, Sarah and Alan, you'll be professing with your whole life, your whole being, that you want to take care of one another. And marriage is that beautiful institution that one and one equals one. The very heart of the covenant of marriage is that. And throughout history, God has established covenants with humanity. We can look to the rainbow as that covenant that God will never destroy the world again by a flood. The wonderful covenant that he established with Abraham, that God would be their God, the Jewish people would be his people. Centuries later, the covenant with Moses, that reaffirmation of the covenant between God and the Jewish people signified in the Ten Commandments. And Christians look to the new covenant, the new covenant Jesus established in this gospel reading in his blood at the Last Supper, that each covenant is instituted by our loving God to establish a new relationship, a relationship between God and each other. And it's done not for God's good, but for our good. God is completely happy without us. Rather, he seeks to find a way for us to be happy. Today, Sarah and Alan are entering into another covenant established by God, the covenant of matrimony. Today, they will declare not only their love for each other, their intention, more importantly, to spend the rest of their lives together. And they've come on this day asking God to unite them, to bless them. The vows that they're shortly to say, I am to declare that they want this in their complete surrender of their individual lives to be joined to each other by God for life. And God will unite them, for better, for worse, in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, for the rest of their lives. Alan and Sarah have chosen the right, loved goodness, and decided to walk humbly with God, to welcome God's grace to be humble. And the married people in the congregation, this church today, would definitely say, humility, a great virtue to have within marriage. It's being willing to consider the needs of the other before our own, to consider the will of God above our own, to be willing to let go of everything in order to grasp each other. Through marriage, this couple will not only be seeking 
their happiness, but more so the happiness of the other. To be willing to sacrifice for salvation, to be walking on that path towards heaven itself, accepting God's will, God's covenant. And that covenant of marriage impels you to look to each other for the support of your new family, to permit God to be your guide. So often in scripture, a covenant has a sign that visualizes the relationship between God and humanity, the rainbow, the promised land, the Ten Commandments, the Eucharist. For today, I'd like to propose a perhaps unusual sign of the covenant that you're entering into today. And the sign that I propose for today, August 21st, 2020, is the mask. <laughs> And you'll be thinking to yourself, the mask? What's he been drinking? Why do we wear a mask? Why during this time of the pandemic, 50 years, God knows, God willing, you're gonna be sitting back laughing with your grandchildren watching this. Be like, why were they all wearing masks? The mask is a sign you care for other people. We don't wear a mask to protect myself. I don't put this mask on to protect myself from the coronavirus. I do it and wear it to protect other people, to save other people in the way that we do. And so, yes, in a small, hopefully humorous way, the mask is a sign that I put the other ahead of myself. That is indeed the very heart of the covenant of marriage, to be willing in great love to put the other ahead of myself. And my prayer for you on this day is that you may be always blessed. I'd like to now invite the rabbi to give the seven blessings. Thank you, Father, as I remove my symbol I've chosen to do a different contemporary take on the seven blessings that are traditionally done at every Jewish wedding. The first one is love. May you be blessed with love. May this love between you be enduring and strong and bring joy into your lives. A loving home. May you be blessed with a loving home filled with warmth, humor, and knowing Alan, that's definitely going to be. And compassion, and knowing Sarah, that's definitely going to be. May you create a family together that honors traditions old and new and diverse. Best friends, may you always be best friends and work together to build a relationship of substance and quality. May you respect each other's individuality and give each other room to grow in fulfilling all your dreams. Wisdom. May you be blessed with wisdom. May you continually learn from one another. May you grow, deepening your understanding of each other and of your journey through life together. Health. May you be blessed with good health even as you endure these difficult times, may life bring you wholeness of mind, body, and spirit, and may you share many happy years together. Art, beauty, creativity. May your life be blessed with the art and beauty of this world. May you find happiness together and something to celebrate every single day of your lives. And finally, community. May you be blessed with community of circle of family and friends. And may there be many, many future occasions for rejoicing in their company. Dearly beloved, 
You have come together here before a minister of the church and in the presence of the community so that your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal and your love be enriched by you with his blessing so that you may have strength to be faithful to each other forever to assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so, in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. Sarah and Alan, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? Yes. Yes. Are you prepared, as you follow the path of marriage, to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? We do. We do. Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? We do. We do. Since it's your intention to enter into the covenant of holy matrimony, join your right hands and declare your consent before God and his church. Alan, do you take Sarah to be your wife? Do you promise to be faithful to her in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love her and to honor her all the days of your life? I do. Sarah, do you take Alan to be your husband? Do you promise to be faithful to him in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love him and to honor him all the days of your life? I do. May the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God who joined together our first parents in paradise, strengthen and bless in Christ the consent you have declared before the church, so that what God joins together, no one may put asunder. Bless, O Lord, these rings, which we bless in your name, so that those who wear them may remain faithful entirely to each other, abide in peace and in your will, and live always in mutual charity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Sarah? Sarah? Receive this ring. Receive this ring. As a sign. As a sign. Of my love. Of my love. And fidelity. And fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Oh. Yeah. Fred? He's fallen. He's fallen. Okay. <laughs> Receive this ring. Receive this ring. As a sign. As a sign. Of my love. Of my love. And fidelity. And fidelity. Don't drop it on. Okay, good. Mothers are so often, in so many ways, the first givers of life to their children. We've lit one candle in celebration of Lori's gift of life to her daughter, Sarah. I now ask Teresa to come forward to light the candle representing the life and the gift of her son. to come forward to light the one candle representing their one life together.
I invite everyone to please stand for our prayer of the faithful. Dear brothers and sisters, let us accompany this new family with our prayers that the mutual love of this couple may grow daily and that God in his kindness will sustain all families throughout the world. For this bride and groom and for their well-being as a family, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For their relatives and friends and for all who have assisted this couple, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For young people preparing to enter marriage, and for all whom the Lord is calling to another state in life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families throughout the world, and for lasting peace among all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the members of our families who have passed away from this world, especially Carol Cole, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. For the church, the holy people of God, and for unity among all Christians, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, who are present in our midst as Alan and Sarah seal their union, accept our prayer and fill us with your spirit, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Now I'd like to offer the priestly blessing that goes back to the days of Moses and Aaron. Though for those of us who are Trekkies, this may seem like live long and prosper. But keep in mind that Leonard Nimoy was raised in an Orthodox Jewish household, and he took this as the Vulcan blessing. It's the traditional Hebrew blessing, forming the letter, the Hebrew letter Shin, which stands for Almighty. And I offer this blessing to all who are gathered here today. Excuse me. We offer this blessing to all who are gathered here today. I will offer it in Hebrew. Father Brendan will offer it in English. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious upon you. May the, Lord lift... May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And let us all say together, Amen. Amen. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, it will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us all trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us now humbly invoke God's blessing upon this bride and groom, that in his kindness he may favor with his help those on whom he has bestowed the bond of marriage. Holy Father, who for a man in your own image, male and female, you created them, so that as husband and wife, united in body and heart, they might fulfill their calling in the world. O God, who to reveal the great design you formed in your love, will that the love of spouses for each other should foreshadow the covenant you graciously made with your people, so that by fulfillment of the sacramental sign, the mystical marriage of Christ and his church might become manifest in the union of husband and wife among your faithful. Graciously stretch out your right hand over these your servants, Alan and Sarah, and pour into their hearts the power of the Holy Spirit. Grant, O oh Lord, that as they enter upon this sacramental union, they may share with one another the gifts of your love, and by being for each other a sign of your presence, become one heart and one mind. May they also sustain, O oh Lord, by their deeds, the home they are forming, and prepare their children to become members of your heavenly household by raising them in the way of the gospel. Graciously crown with your blessings your daughter Sarah, so that by being a good wife and mother, she may bring warmth to her home with a love that is pure and adorn it with welcoming graciousness. 
Bestow a heavenly blessing also, O Lord, on Alan, your servant, that he may be a worthy, good, and faithful husband and a provident father. Grant, Holy Father, that desiring to approach your table as a couple joined in marriage in your presence, they may one day have the joy of taking part in your great banquet in heaven. Through Christ our Lord. May God, the Eternal Father, keep you of one heart in love for one another, that the peace of Christ may dwell in you and abide always in your homes. Amen. May you be blessed in your children, have solace in your friends, and enjoy true peace with everyone. Amen. May be witnesses in the world to God's charity, so that the afflicted and the needy who have known your kindness may one day receive you thankfully into the eternal dwelling of God. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Alan, let me kiss your bride. And ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to announce for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Alan and Sarah, and Sarah Fiore. We're not done yet. <laughs> At every Jewish wedding, we break a glass. This is to symbolize many different things according to your interpretation. One is the destruction of the temple. One is the destruction of your old lives. But I always feel that what it really means, Alan, Sarah, is tikkun olam, heal the world. It's a broken world. You are required to heal it. Mama, do it. Did you practice? No, but it's okay. We're gonna. <laughs> I'm big enough that if that doesn't go anywhere, it's going to go somewhere. Is that on me? It's on you. All right, one, two. We go for it. We're good. Shall we? Shall we? Mazel Tov. Mazel Tov.